Duana Bazalo Shell here. Uh, it's Friday, so it's time for Ask an Attorney. And today I was going to talk to you about um, some things you can do whenever CPS comes knocking at your door. Uh, it's never something that any of us want to have happen in our lives, but um, it could happen at any time. Um, so when CPS receives a, uh, a complaint or a report of a possible child neglect or child abuse, they have a duty to investigate. And so um, a lot of times this means you'll get a knock on the door and they want to come in and talk to you um, and anybody that lives in the house, the child, if the child is of age. Um, I've even had them go to a uh, school age child's school and, and talk to the child there. So it's they, they are required to do an investigation when they re receive a report that indicates that there's child abuse or neglect occurring. Now, sometimes that abuse could be the, the parents are um, physical with each other in front of the children, and that would be enough to trigger an investigation. So just keep that in mind. Um, so what happens when they come to the door? What, what, are, what, what are your rights when that happens? So first, it, it depends on if they have a court order to remove the children or if they are just there to do their investigation. So in extreme cases where there's a likelihood of um, extreme harm to the child, they can get a court order for an emergency court order to remove the children from the home. Now, if that happens, they will have the documentation with them when they show up at your house and Usually when they show up with the, to the house, even without the court order, they may have a uh, police officer with them just to keep the peace. So the first thing that you should do is ask CPS to show you any court orders. Um, now the majority of the time they do not have these court orders. They're, those are for extreme circumstances and it's not often that they will start a case uh, with the removal. Um, a lot of times when I see those, there's um, you know, usually an emergency room doctor or somebody has called them and there's an injury to the child that they believe was caused by the parents. That's not the only situation, but that's an example of one that you might have a court order. <clears throat> so if they don't have a court order, um, do you have to let them in the house? Well, the answer is no, you do not have to you can make them go and get a court order. And they have the ability to get a court order just ordering you to cooperate with them, not necessarily to remove the children. Um, so you don't ever have to let them into your home unless you see a court order saying that you need to comply. Or if they're there to remove the children, a court order that says that they're there to remove the children. So, what? CPS will do a lot of times is come in and um, parents don't don't understand what, what their rights are and they'll have you sign what they call a family safety plan. This is an agreement between you and CPS. It's not a court order. However, it can be a very dangerous document to sign without having an attorney re review it for you because in that very often you are admitting that there is a problem and that if you don't follow these um, agreements, CPS can go to the court and get an order uh, removing the children. So you want to make sure that you read and understand it. You do have the right to take that agreement uh, to an attorney before you sign it. Don't sign it. Um, just let them know you want to have an attorney review it before you sign anything. Because once you sign it, um, you've kind of given up a lot of rights that you might otherwise have um, and sometimes as part of that family safety plan they're asking you to basically self place the children with somebody else um, which a lot of times there's not an end date on the, the safety plans and so they, they can carry on for quite a while so how long are your children in another home um, and a lot of times it's not for a long period. They want you to take drug tests, um, maybe take some classes, um, depending on what the complaint was. 
yeah. Every once in a while you might see my, my puppy stick his head out. He's he's a little upset today, so he's wanting to help me out. But um, So if you see a little dog head come out, that's what that is. So anyway, back to the safety plan, you know, and, and CPS will provide services. So, you know, it's not always a bad thing. If, if there is a drug issue, they can provide some help with that. If there is um, abuse going on, obviously they can help the um, spouse that's a victim of that. So it's, it's not always a bad thing to do that. I would just get an attorney to review the document and tell you what your rights are and give you their opinion. And you want to make sure that you get an attorney that is familiar with CPS and has done that work. So what happens if they do get a court order to remove the children? So CPS in normal conditions before we had uh, COVID extending things um, would have 12 months to either terminate parental rights or return the children to the parent that they removed from. Now that's very important. CPS has to return the, the children to the parent that they removed from unless there's a, a court order saying otherwise. Um, so they either terminate the rights of all parents or they remove from, or they return to the parent that they removed from. <clears throat> they will offer services, um, whether that's you know, drug counseling, uh, rehab, um, you know, victim assistance, whatever the basis of the case is, they can provide service for. Uh, you will have to do everything that they ask of you or face having your parental rights terminated and the children being placed for adoption. <clears throat> now, when they remove from a parent, they will ask that parent for their preference on where their children go to live while the case is pending. Um, that can be family members, that can be friends, which we call kinship. Um, and then CPO, CPS will do a quick investigation, usually a background check, criminal, uh, CPS background, and a drug test. And if those things come back um, all good, then the children will go and live with that person that the parent has requested that they stay with. Um, it's usually a last resort that they put them in any kind of a uh, foster home if possible. Um, there's just not that many available, first of all. And second, you know, it's always best for the kids that they be with somebody that they're familiar with. And they tend to do a lot better, especially uh, older kiddos. So then you'll have 12 months that can be extended up to 18 um, to do those services and do what you need to do. And if you comply with what they ask, they will return the children. Um, if you don't, then they will seek to terminate your rights and place them for adoption. So that's kind of the, the two choices that, that they have. Um, now, along the way, there can be agreements that are reached where the children are placed with somebody else as a conservator, um, which means that person acts as a parent, but your parental rights have not been terminated. So you can always come back and ask for a modification later. So along the way, CPS will have, there will be several court actions uh, or hearings, just a compliance to see how everybody's doing, um, kind of checkpoints along the way. Now, because of COVID, all those, that 12 month and 18 month deadlines, they've been extended. So these cases can go on a lot longer right now. And the danger is, is that, you know, as people are, you know, staying at home more and around each other more and we have the stress of you know possibly job loss or uh, reduction in pay because of COVID um, affecting the business then we have higher stress levels uh, abuse is a little more likely to happen in situations where it was already a possibility and so we may have more reports going on um, during COVID than before so with more reports and possible more uh, children being removed and a longer case timeline, you know, you can be involved with the CPS a lot longer and that possibility is, is higher um, if you're allowing the stressors to get to you and there's violence in the home. So just keep that in mind. Um, I know lots of 
therapy uh, therapists that are doing uh, tele tele appointments so you can do a video like this with them um, to get some help to help relieve those stressors so that you don't find yourself in a situation where CPS is involved and we don't know how long that's going to last because they keep extending those um, those orders that extend those deadlines so this really depends on what happens with with the COVID cases in in the Supreme Court and whether they extend those emergency orders or not so just know you do not have to sign the safety plan when they come to your house you do not have to um, let them in the house it's up to you if you want to you can but I would strongly caution that you do not sign that safety plan until an attorney looks at it so that you know what your rights are you know what they're asking you to do and then you know if they're coming and they're asking you to file a, or sign a safety plan chances are really really good that they don't have enough there to do an emergency removal or else they would be there with an emergency removal order and they can the worst I've seen happen in that situation is that they'll go and get an order for you to comply with their investigation so it's not even a removal for the children just that they're asking that you comp that you comply with them you do the drug test and the yeah, whatever other services they're asking you to do so don't think that they're going to take your children away if they're if you don't sign a safety plan right then and like I said it's fully within your right to have an attorney look at that before you sign it um, and those those are your rights to have that because it is an effect on your parental rights to sign those so you do have the right for an attorney to look at them um, not for free necessarily so um, it's not it's not a criminal case however if you go in and they do an emergency removal and you cannot afford an attorney and if they are seeking termination of your rights uh, you can ask the court to have an attorney appointed to you in that case so that's just kind of a quick down and dirty on, on CPS I just really like for uh, parents to know that they do not have to sign those safety plans until an attorney reviews them with them and lets them know what their rights are and usually a lot of the, the issues arise because of those safety plans being signed before they talk to an attorney um, one other thing that I will caution parents about if you are in a custody battle be very 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 careful about calling CPS during that custody battle that can be used against you to award the other parent uh, possession if you make a report that is unfounded so make a report if you truly believe the children are in danger otherwise if you're not sure and it's just somebody telling you something do your investigation before you make any reports because it can have a detrimental effect on your custody case so hopefully this provided you with some very valuable information and let you know a little bit of what you can do when CPS comes knocking at your door uh, if you have any other questions as always you can reach out to me either through a direct message here on Facebook or via email which is Duana D-U-A-N-A at BoswellTexasLaw.com you can go to our website uh, and we have a contact or a chat form on there you can reach me that way and that website is www.boswelltexaslaw.com or you can always give us a phone call at 832-919-6595 uh, we do offer a free 15-minute consultation so if you have uh, your own specific issue that you have coming up and you want a quick phone call uh, that's free of charge I always love to help people out um, and if there's anything that you need us to help help you with or any information that you want or even if there's a question that you want answered next Friday at 1130 on you know ask an attorney on Facebook live uh, just send them over to me and I will be live here next week at 1130 answering those so you guys have a great weekend and we'll talk to you next week